I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just in an excited mood. I'm excited because I'm looking forward to making this video. Also, I have coffee. That probably... Maybe that's why I'm excited. Also, later on today, I am going back on the radio to talk about books. Which you may remember from my previous going on the radio to talk about books. Basically, I'll link below to that video and also to like this month's radio thing where I talked about some of the books I read in the last month. It's like my radio wrap up. Anyway, none of this has anything to do with the actual video, so moving swiftly on. One other thing to mention before we get started is that while you're watching this, I am actually in Berlin on holiday with Becca. So I will be kind of vlogging and stuff that and sharing it when I get back. But I probably won't be responding to comments for like the next 48 hours because I'm on my phone and it, it, it takes forever on my phone. So yes. Anyway, today's video is a tag Tuesday and it is an original tag that I created with Harriet Rosie. So basically she tweeted saying, why aren't there any mid-year book check-in tags? So I tweeted back saying, you should make one, thinking no more of it. And then she DM'd me and was like, do you want to make a tag with me? So I said yes. And so now we're doing the mid-year check-in tag. Because of that, obviously Harriet's posting her video today as well. I will link to that below. So go through and check that out and hit subscribe if you haven't already. Let's be honest, everyone already watches Harriet Rosie because her channel is awesome. And I'm excited actually to see her take on this video. Although again, I will not see it for two days because I'm in Berlin and I'm, I'd feel rude just like... You know, walking past Checkpoint Charlie watching Harriet on my iPhone. So there are 10 questions in this tag. Harriet and I, we both kind of created like a short list of questions and we scrunched it down to make it fit 10. So, without further ado, let's go. Question 1. How many books have you read so far this year? This year I have read uh, 140 books. So I am 50 books ahead of schedule. My goal is 200. Uh, yeah, I read a lot of books. I didn't come up with this question, this was a Harriet question. This isn't just me finding a way to show off how much I read. Besides, most of them have been, uh, well not most of them, but 25 or so have been these and they're like pretty thin, so yeah. Question number two, what's your favourite book so far this year? So I have done a Q1 favourites video, which again I will link to below. And I'm going to give you my favourite from Q1 because A, I haven't made my list for Q2 yet, so I'm not sure what's on it. And B, you know, one of those books from Q2 could beat the Q1 and I don't want to spoil the suspense. But my favourite book of Q1, and to be honest, it is probably my favourite book so far this year, was The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. And I know it's super depressing and whatnot, but it's also just an incredible piece of dystopian fiction. I mean, this has overtaken 1984 as my favourite dystopian and George Orwell has like been one of my favourite authors for quite a long time. So I'm really looking forward to reading more Atwood. And actually, if anybody is an Atwood fan and would like to let me know in the comments what I should read next, then please feel free to go ahead. I might do Alias Grace, because then I can watch the Netflix thingy. And I haven't seen the Hulu adaptation of this, but I'm not too arsed, to be honest. Question number three. What's your most disappointing book so far this year? So that would be... The Ode Less Travelled by Stephen Fry, which annoyed me so much, I set fire to the corner of it. Only the corner, you know, it's fine. I don't advocate the burning of books, <laughs> except maybe this one. This one can be lightly singed, I think is. <laughs> so that's how we get away with it. And the, the, the thing I had with this, I gave it two stars because it's called Unlocking the Poet Within, which is a poncy title as well, what you know. And, um, Basically, if you want to write rhyming poetry and structured poetry, this has got all of the information about things like, you know, syllable counts and, you know, what an I am is and what a dactyl is and all this stuff. So the actual technical information inside it is correct. It's just it's written in such a smarmy, greasy way that it made me really dislike Stephen Fry. And that kind of annoys me because I've read like six of his books. I think this is the sixth of his books that I've read. And now I kind of don't want to read any more. And I was planning on reading them all. So that's how, how disappointing this book was. Question number four. What genre have you read most this year? So I don't actually log genre. And with like 150 books or whatever, it's kind of difficult to tell. But I think we can safely say it's probably modern classic. Because I've read this far through my Penguin Mini Moderns collections. So that's... 
25 modern classics. It's actually really irritating because I'm now like bang on the center point of where I can either keep the 25 that I've read in here or the 25 that I have yet to read in here. But either way, there's going to be a big old gap in the middle. So it looks unsightly on my shelf and I need to finish reading them. But uh, yeah, probably modern classic. And I've actually treated... Well, Becca got me for my birthday. She got me the vintage minis, which are kind of... They're pretty much modern classics. And uh, But I also bought myself the Penguin Black classic classics. So that's very exciting. Question number five. Name a favourite newly discovered author. So, actually, we're going to go back to the uh, vintage mini moderns here. And we're going to go for... I've got to find them. Where are they? There he is. Probably John Steinbeck. For I've read The Vigilante this year, uh, which is just a few of his short stories. And I also really enjoyed Of Mice and Men as well, which I buddy read with uh, Catalyst Reads before he, he quit. Come back, Michael, if you're watching. Um, and Daphne du Maurier as well. So this is The Breakthrough. But I also read Rebecca, and uh, I read this really irritating edition of it by Varego Modern Classics. Another modern classic to go towards my genre count. And um, yeah, I was heavily spoiled by both the cover and the introduction. So that was irritating, but I am still looking forward to... Like, Steinbeck and De Maurier are probably along with Atwood. Those three are the three authors I most want to read some more stuff by. Question number six. Name the most surprisingly good book you've read. So for me, it's... Leonora Carrington, The Skeleton's Holiday. And the reason for that is that I've gone into each of these Penguin mini moderns with pretty much no expectations. Maybe I've heard of the author before, so I might have, you know, some context or whatever. Carrington is one of the authors I'd not heard of before. Read this book, was just loved the way she used language. This is like an acid trip in a book. And it turns out she was uh, an artist. She was actually predominantly an artist, more, more so than an author. She's one of the leading lights of the surrealist movement. I loved it. I, she's another one who I can't wait to read more by. What I'm probably going to do is I'm going to go through this. When I've finished all 50 of these, I'm going to go back through the box set and do one last video where I kind of tell you which authors I want to read more by. So, for example, we have uh, Shirley Jackson in here as well, who I'd like to read more by. Carrington, definitely. Ralph Ellison. So, uh, yeah, it's been a really good investment into, like, author discovery, that box. Question number seven. Name your favourite and most anticipated 2018 releases. Now, this totally isn't what Harriet was going for with this question, because I'm turning this into self-promotion. But equally, I don't really pay attention to new releases that much. So I don't know. I don't even know if I've read any 2018 releases. I mean, I'm sure I must have done. Someone's probably sent me an arc or something. But I don't know, and I can't say I'm necessarily anticipating any. I know Stephen King's got a new book out, which I'm, I will eventually read when I find it in a charity shop. However, my favourite release so far has probably been uh, Driven by Dane Cobain. Uh, I write books in case I haven't mentioned it before. DaneCobain.com forward slash Amazon or forward slash Amazon USA if you're in America will take you to them. Yeah. And uh, this is a quirky detective novel. I've actually... Oh, that brings me on to actually the most anticipated 2018 release, which is Netflix and Kill, which is the sequel to Driven, which should also come out later this year. I've finalised the interior layout and all the copy and everything. And we're working on front cover designs. And it's looking pretty badass. So I'm excited. So watch this space. Alright, self-promo over. Question number eight. What's the next big priority for you for your reading? So, for me, it is to read the rest of this box set. Finish reading that. And then I want to move on to this. Which is what Becca got me for my birthday. Which is the Vintage Minis box set. I mean, these box sets, they're so beautiful. Look, it has Virginia Woolf on the back. It's out of focus. Put it in front of my head. Pretend it's a, my head is a box. Question number nine. What's been your bookish highlight? So for me, it has to be my trip to Latvia, which I will link to, well, I'll link to the video. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'll link to the video below of my Latvia trip. There's also a playlist knocking around. Basically, I went to Latvia for a few days uh, to learn about Latvian literature and to make videos about it and to blog about it and that kind of stuff. And it was awesome, and it's really kind of got me into Latvian literature as well, so I'm still reading a lot of the stuff. And question number 10, who do you tag? So, because this is an original tag, and we want it to not die immediately, I'm going to tag a bunch of people. If I don't tag you, also feel free to consider yourself tagged. But the ones that I'm specifically going to tag, I think I've picked out like 20. So here we go. We'll just go down the list. Okay, I'm going to tag 
reading outside the box. Even though I don't think they actually do tags, but we never know. They maybe they'll break that rule. Sophisticated books, rainy days and stormy nights. Mark Nash, book Sundays because she she commented recently, being like, "You didn't tag me, but I'm going to do this tag on my 25 random questions tag." So now I tag you in this one as well. There we go. Laurie Dawson, Cupper Books, Anthony Andrews, of course. Weird Reads, Book Your Imagination. Mad Mystical Monk, Min Kobayashi, think I said your channel name right, is that your actual name, writer name, whatever, think I said it right, Jay Shea, Todd the Librarian, the King of Tags, Melissa and Lindsay, Night Fear, Cats and Camera, Peachy Fishy Books, The May Cave, Emma Rosen Books, Bedtime Bookworm, It's My Birthright, and of course, Erin from The Bibliotherapist, who actually I'm currently watching, so that's kind of cool, that's a nice way to end this video. Alright. In fact, I'm currently watching her do the 25 random questions tag after seeing it on my channel, so big up. So yeah, on that note, that is the mid-year check-in tag. Not bad, considering we made it in like a day over Twitter direct messages, just pretty much randomly. But uh, hopefully this goes around and people do it, because we're kind of keen to see people's answers as well. And yeah, on that note, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books. Does that even make... Yeah, that does make sense in this context. Hit subscribe for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Oh, and go and say hi to Harriet as well. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.